Hey everyone, how's it going? Tim Eister here and welcome back to beautiful Bixton in City Skylines 2. In today's episode, I'm going to be starting a major, major highway infrastructure project that uh, is going to span quite some time. All right. So my plan is in the near future, I want to build an airport. I already kind of mentioned this before, but I'm going to repeat myself. I want to build an airport over in this vicinity. Probably the runways will be in this orientation. Initially, I was going to build uh, the international airport, which I haven't unlocked yet. Um, I have unlocked it before just to see what it looks like. And it's, it's, it's okay. I don't really like the way it looks because it's wider than it is long, which is odd. There's not many uh, international airports out there that look like that. So I think I can achieve better looking results by placing two adjacent regular airports and it's probably going to function just as good. So since the airport's going to be over in this location, I have to provide infrastructure so people can get there, right? Um, and one of the main pieces of infrastructure is uh, going to be highways. So right now, I don't have any highways going in this corner of the map. So what I'm going to be working on in this episode is essentially linking this highway over here that runs right past downtown to this highway here, which uh, was already on the map. So I'm going to, to sort of just bridge the gap between both of them. And I know the perfect location to do that right next to my railroad tracks right here. You can see that I have a bunch of green space. Um, it's basically just some wooded forest here, uh, not really doing anything productive. So I'm gonna try my best to cram a highway in between this little gap, try to weave my way through these neighborhoods without tearing up too many homes. Um, but oftentimes that's easier said than done when you're dealing with uh, some urban areas. Over here too is gonna be kind of complicated. I don't know what I'm gonna do uh, to, to link these two highways, but I'm sure I'll be able to figure something out. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right into it. Most of this episode is going to be in time-lapse mode as uh, I speed through this. So I'll, I'm going to dub over a lot of what I'm going to be doing this episode. So sit back and relax and enjoy the episode. So guys, this video was very difficult to make. And the reason for that is the road tools in City Skylines Although they are better in almost every way compared to City Skylines 1, I do find that they're a lot jankier. And what I mean by that is, for example here, I'm just trying to build a simple off-ramp. I don't know if it's just because of the terrain or what it is, but I'm, I was constantly fighting with the road tools. There was always like these weird texture glitches or, you know, lanes are not properly merging into one another. Like, I feel like there's just so much creative freedom in City Skylines 2 that you can't just like place an exit and it's gonna look good the first try. You always have to like kinda do a little bit of trial and error, you know, build an on-ramp and just kinda get a glimpse of how it looks. And oftentimes I find myself being like, oh, okay, well, if I move this a little bit more to the right, it'll look a little better and you know, so I, I can never get it quite right the first time around. And, you know, I am still playing default City Skylines too, right? So no mods. I don't have the luxury of move it, you know. By the end of City Skylines 1, um, with the amount of mods that there are, I could pretty much just, like, make a, a, a half-ass interchange and fix it up post-production with mods. I don't have that luxury in City Skylines 2, so it's just a little more tedious to make a properly functioning and looking interchange. So this little clip here is just an example of, of this weird jankiness that uh, I wanted to talk about. So as a result, I'm going to be skipping ahead a lot in this video, so you won't actually get to see the entire build process of this whole interchange and this whole highway project, unfortunately. So forgive me for that, guys, uh, but I'm going to be showcasing the finished product after uh, a few of some good um, time-lapse clips. 
<laughs> that don't contain too much like going back and forth and that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, so what I'm starting off with right here is uh, the T interchange from our existing main highway that is going to branch off and connect to the new stretch of highway um, that will eventually lead to the airport. And you can see that in the very first part of this video, I was modifying the parklow interchange that I built a few episodes ago. And the reason for that is I felt like that interchange was just going to be a little too close to the big interchange that's going to intersect both highways. So I felt that instead of just completely destroying it because it works quite well, um, I thought it would be better to sort of mesh them together. So I created some sort of collector lane, if you will, that branches off and uh, you can basically take the park low as an exit or you can keep going straight onto the Y interchange that I'm about to build this episode. Another thing that's really exciting about uh, this mega project is that most of what you're going to see here today is elevated. So uh, most urban highway projects, or I don't know if most are, but a lot of them definitely are sunken into the ground. Um, not in Bixton. We're going the extra mile 1950s urban renewal plowing a highway through a neighborhood style and uh, we're going elevated <laughs> so uh, it's going to look cool it's going to offer some epic views when you're driving along and uh it, yeah it's going to be really cool honestly the views that you get of downtown from this highway are really really epic so this was one of the most challenging parts of this build just because of the space constraints that i have Right? There's already existing infrastructure on both sides of this highway. There's buildings, there's rail, there's just about anything you can think of that could be in the way. It's it's here. <laughs> so it's going to be a jumbled mess. Um, but by the end of it, you'll see that I think I make something that looks pretty cool. And I love that this whole section is going to be elevated, by the way. All right. And, and that's really cool. So in a lot of cities, a lot of North American cities, or even European cities for that matter, highways near downtowns are, for the most part, sunken in, at the very least. A lot, of, So a lot of cities are opting for tunnels now with their, uh, their new infrastructure renewal projects. Um, but a lot of cities opt for a sunken solution. Well, here in Bixton, you know what? We're going all the way. This whole section of highway is going to be elevated and it is going to be glorious. And the amount of time that I invested in this interchange alone is pretty crazy. I probably over the last week or so prior to uploading this video, I probably spent like 10 hours on this interchange alone and it's gone through like 10 different variations. I would often build it out and realize that no, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't work right. You know, I, I'm always looking for like a particular look when building an interchange. And sometimes that's very, very challenging to get to look right uh, when it's the first time that you're building something. So, for example, you can see here this particular exit. I'm going above the whole system. And uh, unfortunately, in City Skylines 2, the minimum height requirement for highways is 10 meters. Sometimes you can get away with 7.5 meters, but most of the time it's 10 meters. And I think that's way too much because there's plenty of clearance uh, between the two bridges. Honestly, I think like five meters would be a more appropriate limit because then you can get some much more tightly woven interchanges and, and you know, you don't have to, to build as long of ramps and stuff to get up to your desired height. Um, I'm sure that's probably going to be a mod at some point, some sort of anarchy mod. If, if it's not already there, I don't know. I haven't really looked at any mods yet for City Skylines 2. Uh, I'm definitely 100% going to get into modding probably when uh, actual modding support becomes available for the game. You know, it's just going to make troubleshooting and, and that kind of stuff much easier. I'd rather just wait for actual modding support to come out rather than tinkering for sometimes hours <laughs> when a patch comes out and it breaks a bunch of mods. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely pretty high up there on my wish list 
is uh, the minimum height requirement for bridges to be lowered down to whatever you want it really. What I would do in City Skylines 1 when building a bridge is I would take a, a shipping container prop and put it under a bridge and then use move it to lower the bridge to just over the height of the shipping container, maybe a little bit more. And that was just to simulate as if there was a transport truck under the bridge. And I, I, would, I would leave just enough space for the container to fit and then maybe a little bit more because that container would be on a trailer if it was on a flatbed uh, being hauled by a truck. Um, but yeah, I mean, as you can tell by what's going on right here, there's like plenty of room for like three trains on top of each other to fit under these bridges, right? So again, I think the minimum bridge height should be lowered to probably around five meters. I think that's like close to a realistic height as well um, that most overpasses are in real life anyways. Probably like three to five meters is a, an appropriate height. And I don't know, maybe I'm just getting a little carried away here, but wouldn't it be cool if there was no limit whatsoever and the height of your bridge would actually determine what type of vehicle could fit under it. So if you want everything to fit under it, you got to raise it to at least five meters. You know, there's some bridges in real life that are only like two meters high or three meters and only small cars can fit under them. So that would be pretty cool if that was a thing in City Skylines. But, you know, that's probably a little bit too in-depth. Uh, so here I am fixing up the rail line, of course, going through town. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to destroy a few houses because I pretty much nudged the whole rail line a little bit to the side to make room for these uh, on-ramps. But I think it was worth it. This, uh, this maze of roads and rail and infrastructure looks really, really cool in the end. All right, so moving on now, guys, I'm going to start to work on the stretch of highway that's going to link the two cities together, I suppose, or these two highways, at least. For now, I am simply going to build a nice cloverleaf interchange, but that's bound to change. I'd love to build like a whirlwind interchange at some point in the future, but I'm going to wait until the area becomes much more urbanized and, and maybe we can justify that. But for now, I think just a plain old simple cloverleaf will do just the trick and this I can comfortably build in a time-lapse fashion because I got unlimited room to build it so uh, I'm not gonna have to uh, redo a stretch of road 50 times <laughs> for it to fit just right so enjoy another couple of minutes of time-lapse mode and then I'll jump back into live play and uh, and we'll rain in live play for most of this episode after that as I figure out what the next steps are in this let's play.
All right, everyone, here we are back in live play, and I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what I've built over the last few minutes for you, few days for me. <laughs> so starting over here at our park low interchange, you can see here that I have this split here. So traffic that is wanting to go down this way can branch off here and keep to the left and then go boop, down that way, or they can merge off from the right and uh, and use the park low as it uh, as it once was and then the same thing if you're getting onto the highway you can get onto the main road going to downtown or you can keep going straight here and then off this way and as you can see here this is a oddly shaped interchange so it's sort of like a traditional y interchange but i added this little road here just to provide some additional access to this part of town i'm hoping this doesn't get too clogged up but so far so good um, I've done a few modifications over here, but I, I highlighted that in the time lapse. So uh, if you if you remember how it looked before, uh, it's a little bit different now. So carrying on over here, you can see that I have a diamond interchange, a very tightly packed one, linking up this main street here, and going a bit further up the highway, there is this interchange. I don't even know what this one is called, but uh, hopefully it functions as cool as it looks. So heading on down here, I didn't feature this interchange at all in the time lapse. It was the last one I built and essentially it just links up this main avenue to this highway in a, a sort of Y format like this. And then of course we have the uh, Cloverleaf interchange over here in the outskirts of town. And now begins the airport. And for this airport, I'm going to be building it in time-lapse mode just because if I did this live, this video would be over an hour and a half long. And I know some of you would be totally okay with that. <laughs> uh, for most viewers, I try to keep my videos between 30 and 40 minutes long. And plus, doing this in a time-lapse mode gives you guys a better sense of how the airport's built overall. It's just a little bit quicker. Um, but I am going to include a little bit of live play at the very end of this episode just to get a few little things set up. Uh, but for the majority of this build, it's going to be in an accelerated time lapse format. And actually, I said I'm building one airport, but in fact, I'm going to be building two airports in this episode. So I got a comment in one of my previous videos saying that a good substitute for the uh, international airport, which you know, it doesn't really look the best, in my opinion. Um, the substitute for that is to build two smaller airports side by side. So that's exactly what I'm going to do for this build. You'll see in just a little bit what I mean by that. But yeah, I was actually... In the beginning, I was going to place the international airport right from the get-go. Just, you know, I wasn't going to bother plopping down a small airport and then eventually upgrading. I was just going to go big and plop the large international airport. But then, I don't know, I find that it's it's very, it's a strange shape because the airport is wider than it is long, which is weird. You know, there's no airports in real life that are kind of like that. So I don't know, I felt like the airport looked a little out of place uh, until I read um, one of you guys' comments in one of my previous videos suggesting to place two airports adjacent to one another just like you're seeing right now on your screen it looks really cool because the runways are kind of like they're parallel to each other but they're kind of staggered which looks really cool so uh, thanks for that suggestion guys um so along with this airport there's going to be a cargo rail connection to the rest of the rail network and uh you know that's just to allow cargo planes to bring cargo into the airport so yet another option to import goods so for the next couple of minutes, I'm now going to start working on an interchange to service the airport. I find I made this interchange a bit large for my liking. It should have been a bit smaller because we are still quite close to downtown and, you know, density would be pretty high here this close to downtown. But nonetheless, I think the interchange looks really cool and uh, it's going to function just fine. You'll see how everything turns out in just a second. But yeah, I'm finally excited to get an airport into the city. I've been wanting to do this for quite some time now. And, you know, now that we have an airport, we'll be able to bring 
tons of tourists into town, some more goods, more people. You know, because we're a proper city now. We surpassed 50,000 people. We can finally say that Bixton is a proper city. And Auburn, right? We can't forget Auburn. Auburn contributes quite a bit of people to, uh, to the region's population. All right, everyone, this is what we got so far. I'm really, really liking the look of this airport and it's on a much more appropriate scale than the International Airport. I can't show you because I don't actually have it unlocked at this very moment, but in uh, a few episodes ago, I just unlocked a bunch of stuff just to play around with it. But yeah, I can assure you that this airport layout just looks a bit better in my opinion. Um, so although all the infrastructure is down, the next step is to actually make it functional. So we don't have any water or anything coming here yet. Uh, so let's get this fixed up. I think the easiest way to do that for now is maybe just to run some pipes underground. Here, I'll do a combined pipe. And uh, I guess the easiest way to do this would be to run it under the highway. And I'm just going to straight pipe this right into the rest of the, the sewer system. So that covers our water problem. Now, as far as power goes, you know, I could run underground power lines to this whole thing. I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's go underground and look here. We have, oh, what's this now? Why is this acting all weird? All right, well, I guess I'll just connect it from over here. And what I'll do, I'll just draw this power line, boop, right, direct straight pipe to the power plant. 
There we go. All right. So we have all our utilities that are servicing these areas. Now, the next thing to do is actually to um, create some routes to bring passengers into town. So this is actually pretty cool. Okay. Because I have two airports, I can load balance these airports, right? So it's going to keep congestion down to a minimum and, and I can assure that traffic isn't going to be too intense here. So I think what I'm going to do is this airport here can serve the northern part of the map. Let's do that. And then it can also serve the eastern part of the map. And then the other side over here, we'll do the southern and western part of the map. So like I said, this is going to load balance both airports and it's also going to make make them look a little more alive, right? Because we'll have active flights coming in and out of both airports, even though it's two completely separate terminals. Uh, so along with that, I should probably build a cargo route. Now, this is the only cargo airport that we have at the moment. So let's do a cargo route to this end of the map. Now, should I do a cargo route to like every corner of the map, I wonder? I don't know. Maybe just like an east and a west connection for now. There. So we got two airlines. Can I like customize? Why do I have two planes? They look identical. I mean, this, this, the fact that there's this drop down means that there's eventually going to be like a ton of plane selection that we'll be able to do here. Um, okay, well, I guess I'll just leave this as is. This is pretty cheap for a plane ticket to who knows where. <laughs> for anywhere, really. And look at that. We already got some passengers coming in. Uh, oh, well, not exactly. These planes are just leaving the airport. But look at that. Woo! We're importing goods into the city. At least there's that. We're starting off good. And I think these planes are leaving their hub to go pick up passengers. And look over here. Got some planes coming in. And leaving. Perfect. All right. So I know, guys, this area may look a little barren right now, but don't forget that we are on the very outskirts of the map. My plan for the future is I want to build a big office park around the airport as you normally find in real life. You know, you have like normally a bunch of warehouses and industrial buildings around airports. So uh, I'd like to get into that at some point, but I'm going to leave that for another episode. All right. So what do I want to do now? The next thing that I would love to work on is a bus terminal. Now, let me just take a glance here. Bus station. Would I be able to fit a bus station in, in this cube here? Yeah, it looks like it would fit quite nicely with some minor adjustments over here. Maybe not. I think it might be fine. So I am going to take a two lane road. Oh, yeah. That looks pretty cool, I guess. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to build a bus station right here. And that will provide us with another uh, public transportation option to the airport. There, so I'll connect both of these terminals up. And then I should probably just do like a direct connection to downtown, should I? Let's try that. Look, we've got one available dock here for a bus route. There, let's do that. So we got one bus route direct from downtown. Maybe I actually should do another one to 
downtown Auburn. So this one, I'll depart from the ferry terminal right downtown. And then back to the ferry terminal. Complete route. There we go. It's probably a good idea to build some taxi shelters as well near the airport. I'm actually going to build a couple of them in front of each terminal. There we go. So we got a ton of parking. We got a ton of public transportation options. Maybe eventually there will be a, a subway line coming to service the airport. But for now, this is what we got. Can't wait to see passengers coming in. Ooh, look at that. We got four people coming into town. We got none leaving. Oh, what's this now? More cargo. <laughs> it appears this airport is being used primarily as a cargo airport with uh, just a few lonely passengers coming back. What's this? Do we have a pet as well coming in? Cool. And with all of that, guys, this will conclude this episode of my City Skylines 2 Bixton Let's Play. Holy crap, this was a productive episode. We finally got a highway loop contouring both cities. We got an international airport built. Wow, a lot of stuff went on this episode. And I'm super excited to see how the city is uh, going to expand from here. So, with that being said, guys, stay tuned to the next video. I really, really appreciate you guys watching. If you liked this video and my videos in general, feel free to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to comment what you think down below as well. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of future uploads. So, that is it for me today, guys. Again, thanks so much for watching and take care until the next episode.